Our journey up the Oregon coast in search for lighthouses continue. About 40 miles from our campsite, just north of Florence, Oregon, we made it to Hesita Head Lighthouse. This is our first lighthouse of the day, but our fourth on the Oregon coast. The lighthouse can be seen from Highway 101 or up close and personal if you're willing to take a short elevated walk. The scenic walk to the lighthouse is a half mile from the parking lot. This place is so much more than just a lighthouse. While the lighthouse is 56 feet tall, it stands 205 feet above sea level thanks to the bluff it is placed on. Hesita Head Lighthouse is one of the most photographed lighthouses in the world. Twelve miles up the road, we made another stop. K Perpetua Visitor Center inside Ceyslaw National Forest is the perfect place for a breather or lunch break. All right, so we are at K Perpetua. Now we did uh, stop at the visitor center, and uh, after hanging around, taking in the views, we were on our way out, and then we realized that Thor's Well is here. Uh, we almost missed it. K Perpetua offers beautiful views, trails, and the popular Devil's Churn and Thor's Well. Thor's Well is one of Oregon's most incredible, unique, and popular attractions. This well in the rock set along the Pacific is a must visit. It's quite a spectacular sight when the wave hits Thor's well. The water jets out and then gets swallowed back down the pool again. The Oregon coast, though beautiful, it is also dangerous. Always take precaution and adhere to all warnings. After spending some time exploring Cape Perpetua, we continued on. 30 miles up the road, we made it to our next lighthouse. So this is a Yakina Head Lighthouse, it's lighthouse number five. There is another Yakina um, Beach Lighthouse, but that was like the original one. It was too short, so they had to build a second one. Yakina Head Lighthouse stands at 93 feet. The tower is located on a narrow point of land nearly one mile into the Pacific Ocean. Winds and rain have buffeted this lighthouse since its beginning in 1872, and it took approximately one year and over 370,000 bricks to construct. The light has been active since headkeeper Fayette Crosby walked up the 114 steps to light the wigs on the evening of August 20th, 1873.
Yakina Head is also the migration path of the gray whale, and they can be spotted quite easily in the months of December and January as they migrate south to warmer waters. At just 6.5 miles up the road, we made a quick stop. Parking was limited, but we were fortunate enough to find a spot pretty easily. Mateo was asleep, so we had to take turns. Just a few hundred feet from our parking spot, we got to see Devil's Punch Bowl. Alright, so right up the street from our very last lighthouse is Devil's Punch Bowl. We definitely had that on the list to stop, and uh, that did not disappoint. What a beautiful, beautiful view. Alright, so after the Devil's Punch Bowl, we made it out about an hour and a half uh, more east into Tillamook. We are now at the Tillamook Creamery. We're pretty, pretty excited to see if there's any kind of tour or samples or anything like that. We're just super excited to be here. Sounds good. We're gonna get some cheese and some ice cream. Let's go! Since 1909, they have been dedicated to making the best cheese with all the best ingredients available. Now we are in line to get. What are we getting? Other! We have tons of flavors. You can see the line's very long. So I went ahead and got the grilled cheese with the some roasted fire roasted fire roasted tomato soup. And um, it's really delicious. Look at this. You get cheese curds at the bottom of your soup. It's so good. Mm. Alright, so we got the flight. Uh, ice cream flight with banana split, cookies and cream, and Oregon strawberry. It's like a little bit of a... Like hey, yo. Yummy? I tell you, you love your ice cream. <laughs> In the early days, the co-op, their farmers had butter and milk to sell. The fastest route to Portland and surrounding areas was by water. So they built Oregon's first official ship, the Morning Star. Since their founding, their expectation remained the same. Delicious products made the right way. So where are we? We are at Cape Fears Lighthouse. Well, we're at 
the Cape Fears lighthouse, scenic, what is it called? No, but before we got here. We're at the Cape Mears Lighthouse. Lighthouse number five. All right, so after the Tillamook um, Creamery, we kind of went back a little bit to visit this lighthouse, which should be the last lighthouse of our tour. Uh, not the last one. Is there one more? Okay, we got one more and we'll hopefully see it probably tomorrow because uh, it escaped disappointment in Astoria. We hope to make it to Astoria tonight, but it will be dark if we do so. Uh, but let's let's get it. Let's get uh, down the street to the last, probably, probably, probably the last stop of the day. Yeah, this is the closest we've been to the actual light of the lighthouse. made it to Cape Mears Lighthouse, the shortest lighthouse on the Oregon coast standing at only 38 feet. Built in 1889, the lighthouse was visible for approximately 21 miles because of its placement and the Fresno lens. Time was beginning to wind down, but we felt we had enough time for one more stop. It was going to be an epic one. Parking was a little difficult, but we were once again fortunate to find a spot perfectly situated to the beach entrance. Alright guys, so from Tillamook we decided to go another hour, and this is what we came across. Hey, Stock Rock at Cannon Beach. All right. Now I know why Cannon Beach and Haystack Rock is so popular. We got to Cannon Beach just in time to see the sunset. Haystack Rock stands at 235 feet. At low tide, you can explore the area. There you'll find starfish, sea anemone, crabs, and more. The rock has mentions in several novels and movies such as Kindergarten Cop and the cult classic The Goonies.